Hi, welcome to the KPS booth. Today I'm going to show you the basics of using all this gear. Now the best way to conceptualize it is to think about signal flow. That is, what is the source of my audio signal and how does it move throughout the gear until it goes off as a radio wave and reaches my listener. Now there are three main sources of audio signal in this room. The first comes from the RAIN 72 console. You have three different options for how you want to play music. One is from your computer. The second is through CDs on the CDJs. And the third is from vinyl records. The second source of audio are the microphones. This is for your voice. And the third source of audio is the computer. On the computer, we have two programs, Simeon and Wavecart. And these allow us to play legal identification for the radio station, advertisements, public service, public service announcements, and our automation, which has thousands of songs. And that's what we turn on when there's no one in the booth. Now, each of these three sources of audio all eventually go through the board. And from the board, you decide which source do I want to get signal from and ultimately send out to my listener. So this is the board. This is the last stop for your audio signal before it becomes a radio wave. Now, like I said, there are three different sources and you can choose between them on the board here. The first is the mics. You've got mic one and mic two. If you wanted to speak into the mic, you would press on. Um, also on mic two. Now, right now, I'm playing Automation, which is from the computer. And on the board, it's called WaveCart. So, you can see that WaveCart is on. And if I want it to be playing from either my laptop, the CDs, or vinyl, I would go to Serato. I'd press that on, and then I would turn it up. So, when you're using this, you need to remember that if you want signal, it has to be on, and it has to be turned up on the slider. This is the RAIN 72 mixer. The RAIN gets inputs from either Serato on your laptop, the CDJs, or the record player. There's two decks, left and right, or one and two really. And on each one, you need to select if you want that deck to be receiving input from your laptop, the CDJ, or the record player. The input selection is the top knob on both decks. USB-A will be for Serato on your laptop, PH, which means phono, is for the record players, and AUX is for the CDJs. Now, um, the next thing to be aware of is the volume for each deck, which is right below the input selection. And then on the bottom, each deck has its own individual volume slider, and then you switch between decks here with the selector. So you can have the left deck, deck one, be set to your record player, and then you can have the right deck be set to a CDJ. So you can go in between. So you're ready to use Serato on your laptop. You've made sure that Serato or USB-A is the input you selected on the RAIN. Now you just gotta plug in your laptop with the USB. Okay, open Serato. This is what it's gonna look like when you start. The way to get music into each deck, you can load it into Serato or you can just drag from iTunes or your desktop. I typically just drag files in from iTunes playlists. Super easy, just like so. You want to make sure that ABS is selected and INT is selected. These are the default settings, so just don't change them. The really important thing, in fact the only important thing in Serato, I would say, is the play button. All you really got to do is press play, and then your music is going. Um, you can jump around in between songs by sliding around or clicking up here. Now, if you want to get the next song, then just drag it in to the second deck and line up where you want it, and then press play and it'll start going. 
Now, the important thing to remember is that the controls on the rain are still synced up to the controls on your laptop, so the slider to go between decks is still operative, as is the fader on each deck. Once you've selected the appropriate input on the rain, you're ready to use the CDJ. Start by turning it on with the button in the top right hand corner. Then plug in your USB drive with your music on it. The right way around. Next, select USB right here. So you can navigate with this wheel here. It kind of acts like your mouse and you click to select. You can also go back with the button right above it. Once you're in the folder, select the song that you want to play and click down on it with the knob. When you want to play the song, just press the green play button in the bottom left hand corner. Now if you were to play another song on this same deck of the CDJ and you navigate to it, then it's going to automatically start playing that song because the play button isn't for individual songs, it's for decks. So if you want a better transition between songs, you should link up both the decks of the CDJs. To link up the second deck of the CDJ again, just turn it on. All you gotta do is press link. It might take a little while to load, but that's okay. Once it's loaded up, it works the exact same as the first deck. The record players work just like any other record player you might have already used. First of all, make sure you've selected the phono input on the rain. After that, take off the blank vinyl and put on the record that you want. To turn the record player on is the knob in the left. Right is on, left is off. To start spinning, press start. This is the tone arm, and that's the needle. That's what reads the grooves, plays your music. To start the track, pick up the tone arm with the lever to the right of it. Now very gently guide it to the blank space at the start of the record, then drop the tone arm down. Just like that, you're spinning wax. So we have two microphones in the booth, um, microphone one and microphone two. If you want to use one of these, the first step is to switch it on, on the board, and then speak very clearly right up to the front of the phone. When you press the microphone on, the monitors, the speakers in the room are going to shut down. That doesn't mean that the music has stopped playing over the air, it just means that it's not playing in the booth so that you can speak clearly. And when you're finished, then make sure you turn the microphone off on the board. So if you want to hear yourself through headphones, first you got to find a pair with an eighth inch jack, quarter inch jack, not going to work. Then you plug it in right here where it says headphone out. and your levels are right above it. Now, the reason you'd want to use headphones is because this is exactly what your listener at home is hearing. Um, and this is the best way to know whether or not you're speaking clearly when you're talking to the mic. So, right above you here, we have two studio monitors. That's how you can hear your show. And you can control the volume of the studio monitors with the control room volume knob. Again, just to reiterate, when you're speaking into the microphone, 
the monitors are just gonna shut down completely. That doesn't mean that there's nothing being played on air. It just does that so you can speak clearly at the time. So this is our operations log. This is mandated by the FCC, so it's very important that you fill this out every time you have a show. Now, this is what it's going to look like each time. First, you've got to sign in, and eventually you're going to have to sign out, and as always, put the exact time that you did both. Now, these are things we're required to play. The first is a legal ID. That says KUPS 90.1 FM, the sound. The next is an underwriter. That's an advertisement from our sponsors. A DJ plug or liner is similar to a legal ID. It's reminding our listener, hey, you're listening to KPS The Sound. Um, it's a little less formal. If the legal ID is your social security number, the liner is your name. Um, if it's past 10 p.m., you're going to need to play a safe harbor, which says we are going to be playing explicit music um, in this hour. And a public service announcement is um, just a nice thing to do for the community. You're going to do another liner before you finish, and then if there's no one after you, you'll have to turn on automation. So the computer is going to keep playing songs while you're gone. So everything you need to play, legal IDs, underwriters, PSAs, and automation, is all going to be on this computer. Now, automation comes from this program we call Simeon. Really only a couple of important things you need to know to work the Sibian is just pressing play and pause. Also, there's a play, a play and a pause button down here. The crucial thing is this button, auto. If, you, if it's on off or assist, then once this song ends, it's not going to jump to another song. So if it's on auto, then you'll keep cycling through like for eternity. And this is programmed to know our safe harbor hours and know our basic schedule. So all you really need to worry about is turning it on and making sure it's on auto. The wave cart is where you get liners, underwriters, and PSAs. Up here in the top right, you can select like what section you're searching for. Legal IDs, liners, PSAs. Um, Say I wanted to play this one legal ID, what's your sound? I would select it, drag it in here, and then pl press play when I'm ready. And if you want to make more space, just eject it. Another cool thing about the wave cart is that it actually has music on it. In addition to the automation, you can just get individual songs from the wave cart and play them directly. Um, one really important thing to note is that these, um, both of these programs are both being channeled through the board through WaveCart so they can play at the same time and it can cause this like horrible dissonance. So if you're going to play a legal ID, make sure that Simeon is not also playing. Pause Simeon before you go to play your legal ID. That's all you need to know. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and have a good show.